Now, power electronics is a pretty important but very slow moving field of technology. Unlike consumer electronics, which kind of doubles its performance every one or two years, power electronics only sees some kind of improvement in the, say, a vast eight or 10 year lifespan. And I'm talking about uh, circuits that basically use uh, chipsets like your uh, processing technology, the architectures that they use, and uh, you know, the millimeter wave for 5G and stuff like that. Any kind of new technology that carries the existing consumer space forward will be considered as power electronics. And uh, the driving force has largely been silicon and silicon based chipsets. And while silicon is great, it has some limitations. And uh, you may have heard of another potential replacement for silicon, which is at least on paper vastly better, and that's gallium nitride. Now, gallium-based uh, chipsets are not a new thing, actually. They have already been invented long back, and I, we've already seen blue-color LEDs, which are nothing but gallium nitride LEDs. Uh, they're used to create these blue lasers that you see in uh, Blu-ray discs and uh, other technologies of sorts. Uh, and they are also used to create white LEDs, like the LED that you see with white color, that's just the uh, blue LED with a yellow phosphor coating on it. So gallium has been a part of our daily lives for a very long time, but now they seem to have been moving a little bit forward, at least from the past decade. Like I said, it takes around 8 to 10 years for it to have some kind of significant improvement, and I think we are on the verge of a new one. So then why is this gallium nitride that much better than silicon based components? Well, yeah, let's discuss about that. Now, gallium nitride, just like silicon based chips, is a semiconductor, meaning that it doesn't always conduct at uh, a normal temperature, but after a certain electron volt uh, voltage applied to its band gap, that's when it starts conducting. But gallium compared to silicon is considered as a wide bandage uh, semiconductor, meaning that there is a lot more voltage required to start uh, its conduction. So, you can take a look at this table to have different voltages that are required to have these semiconductors start conducting. So, gallium is pretty high up there, meaning that it's very useful for high voltage applications because it can handle a very high voltage. The breakdown threshold of gallium nitride is about 10 times higher than silicon, so like I said, it can withstand very high voltages. And thanks to this high voltage barrier, they also have much higher temperature resilience. So while our silicon based chipsets like the processors that we have on our laptops or uh, any desktops, they really cap out at 100 degrees Celsius and the uh, manufacturers try to make sure that the temperatures are always below 100 degrees because anything above that, the transistors inside those chips will uh, randomly start firing and that can cause a lot of problems like it can cause crashes and uh, glitches and stuff like that. That same 100 degrees Celsius wouldn't be a problem for gallium nitride because its temperature withstanding range would be anywhere near 400 degrees Celsius. So there really would be no need for expensive coolers or any kind of sophisticated cooling technology because it can handle much higher temperatures. Additionally, these gallium nitride chips also have uh, much higher switching speeds, meaning that they themselves do a lot of heavy lifting. So in case they are used in uh, something like the, uh, say for example, the power adapters that we use for our phones, the fast charging adapters no need to have a lot of uh, large components that are static, like uh, they, they don't need to have a lot of huge capacitors or inductors. These gallium nitride chips will do most of the power conversion and as a result, the chargers itself can be very small. Like you may have seen these entry level chargers that uh, Anchor is offering, uh, which is nothing but the gallium nitride fast chargers. Comparison to the normal silicon chip based chargers that we have seen from say Xiaomi, Oppo, Huawei, OnePlus, uh, they are like almost two thirds the size, which is pretty impressive. Since gallium can withstand higher temperatures, a same size gallium uh, chip as of a silicon chip will uh, vastly outperform the silicon in the same voltage range. Or a gallium nitride chip can be much smaller to match the same performance as a silicon chip. So the electronics can be further reduced and uh, the overall device can be made much smaller. And that is the main advantage of gallium nitride. Like it allows you to have the same kind of performance and power in a very small body. And thanks to this very high switching speed, gallium nitride can be used as a transmitter for um, technologies like millimeter wave. So 5G antennas will be vastly using gallium nitride chips, something that silicon based chips vastly lag behind in comparison. The only problem that why gallium nitride isn't uh, vastly available and it's made commercial all the way is that it's a little bit expensive and it's difficult to manufacture at this moment. Uh, silicon based technologies have almost reached their uh, saturation or maturity time where we know exactly how to do it and what to do. So silicon is pretty easy to mine and it's uh, relatively affordable because of uh, the ease of mining it. And as a result, the silicon industry is uh, like it's very well matured at this point. So you can't really uh, penetrate that with gallium um, just like that. However, there have been methods where they, they have developed the gallium wafers with the silicon or silicon carbide as substrate. So the existing silicon industries and the factories can still be used to manufacture gallium wafers. So yeah, in short, gallium nitride can make your devices uh, equally efficient, uh, run cooler for longer and be much smaller in comparison. The only problem is that it's difficult to manufacture and uh, difficult to mine and uh, the profit margins won't be very high. So when you look at it as a business, the companies won't find much sense in uh, going with gallium as opposed to silicon. 
So while gallium nitride isn't going to be the immediate replacement for silicon, uh, we, we, that's surely the way in which the industry is going towards. And uh, like I said, power electronics take a long time to process from one side to another and transition to that new phase. So yes, gallium does play a major role in the future, but we are not there just yet. Uh, 5G and other technologies are just being developed and uh, are barely implemented in a very few places around the world. And as these technologies get more mature and more common, uh, these technologies will also see more light. And there you have it. That was the difference between gallium nitride chips and uh, the advantages that they have over normal silicon chips. Um, if you like this video or if you have any suggestions, then uh, keep them in the comments down below. And uh, stay subscribed for more content like this. And I'll see you next time. Cheers.